Welcome to, to module 11, where we'll talk about the cloud connector. Uh, the cloud connector is a way that enable you or SAP cloud platform to access your on-premise system. So it's, I guess, a, a good way to get access to all the different resources you have. Um, it's, yeah, it's the, the main features that you have when re connecting to the CPI is just the, the cloud to on-premise. There's some other features, but they are not available uh, for, for, for that uh, area. So it's a, a small Java application that you just start, and it's pretty simple to install it. Um, you can have multiple cloud connectors, so if you have multiple sites and just want to connect directly with them, uh, then you can actually have, and then you specify location ID, then it knows that if I'm doing, want to connect with this location ID, I know it's the, the site in Berlin that we want to connect to. And that way you don't need to go through a lot of internal network, but you can actually go directly to that specific location. And also if you have uh, different scenarios uh, with it, it may be easier. Uh, you can download the, 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 the yeah, installation from HANA on demand slash cloud. And I'll just show you there. So I guess the main thing about this works and how how, how we actually can understand it is uh, it's the way it works is you from the uh, from the cloud connector will create a connection to South Cloud Cloud Platform, and this connection will then stay open, and that means that when SAP Cloud Platform want to send a request to the local system, it will just send it into this uh, currently opened uh, HTTP channel, and then it will be routed here. Obviously, this, yeah, so it's not just a reverse proxy. There's uh, different ways you can do filtering here. Uh, only allows certain URLs on that specific system to be uh, possible to, to retrieve. Um, the connection up here is specified with just HTTP, for instance, so no security. But once the connection from here to here, then it is secured. But obviously, this link between these two is, is uh, secured. Um, there's a really good book on this uh, topic that if you want to learn a little more about what you can do and some of the, the more advanced configuration, check this, uh, this book out. Um, so uh, once you have installed it, go to localhost uh, 443, obviously depending on how you go through the installation. Um, and then it's uh, administrator and password manage. So the place you download it is, is here. And here you have the cloud connector with all the different uh, installation files there are. Uh, you have the manual uh, for it. and sizing recommendations um, and specify how you set up sif sif different systems, how you replace the SSL certificate to something more meaningful. And then once you've installed it, you would simply just go to here, log in, and I think it literally took me three minutes on, on this one to install it, maybe actually one minute. Um, so uh, then we have to reset. Uh, the password for the the user, which probably the admin user, we will then define a sub account, and this would be our EU, and then we need to f to find the sub account up here. Um, so here we can see what what sub accounts we have. I guess it will be this one. Where my CPI system is connected to. Not sure what we can specify here. What the sub account name? Sub account user, and then we need to specify our current user that we already have. And then once we have done that, we should in here be able to see the different connections. So let me just pause it and fill this this in. Okay, so the thing I was missing was I needed to use the technical name for the near environment and not this one as the sub-account name. 
So now I've configured uh, a c connection to this specific uh, instance. And then if I go to my cloud platform, check out the, the system on my cloud connectors, I can then see now that we have one that is, is connected. So uh, I want to give access to my PI system. So this must be cloud to on-premise. Here I can set up, a, we have a process integration system. It's protocol HTTP. We haven't, well, we have HTTP, but probably not specific. So we will have a username that is, so this is our PI system. And then we want to specify it uh, So this is what you would actually see in the cloud connector When you're connecting if we want to do any authentication along and that can obviously be a little more challenging set up uh, uh, how that works. So now we have actually specified uh, a connection from this and that means that here we can also specify what are the URLs that we want to uh, enable and obviously you only want to enable the one that, that really makes sense that you need. Um, but here we have just specified that the global uh, system is public accessible. And if we check our configuration then in our cloud platform we can then see here that it has actually made our PI system uh, already available um, so uh, that was all you needed to do to expose the PI system obviously you probably want to go th do s some of these uh, filtering and configure it and say hey it's uh, ah, this one we want to use subpath uh, otherwise you would not be able to access any content below it um, so then it's just uh, start using it and to use it we will can just go into our PI system and here we have our courses this is module 11 So we will have our module 11 up here and if we want to get access to our PI system and show how that would look like we will just set a simple flow up uh, HTTP module 11 and here we'll just then we'll use HTTP we will specify that this is the on-premise we don't have any authentication we will just uh, reach the, the standard URL and the URL we need to use is then this one there um, post it's just a get that should be okay and we will deploy it So uh, let's see how it works. Okay. 
So I guess there is some redirecting issues uh, that it is trying to fetch some different site internally, obviously. Uh, so let's just try to put this in as the target root on this. So now we can see we're getting some uh, NetWeaver information. So we can see we are actually connecting it via Postman to the cloud platform and then downloading the content. So that was uh, some of the things we have here. I guess you also have the option in, in the ES here. Here you can if you specify it here. Let me just uh, get this up and running, and then we'll see how it works. So now I've configured it, I've added DPO, the URL, and then I've created a username and password for it. And that means that when I go onto my channels here, I can actually go under here, say mapping, um, message mappings. I can then select where it should find these, and it's the repository. If I have any of my forgive. It will show you what resources it needs to import for this to work. And then you can actually uh, assign it to the message uh, as any other message mapping. So that's a pretty easy way to do the conversion between message mappings. Uh, and add them using this uh, cloud connector. Uh, so assign, and then we can select our invoice mapping. So um, I hope this gives you an idea about how you can actually uh, uh, use this uh, this tool and understand what, yeah, how the cloud connector works. You need to specify the parameters in here. Uh, the on-premise, the location ID, if you had specified location ID when configuring the, the sub-account, um, then yeah, you'll be able to see it here. I'm not sure if, if we can change it. So here we have sub uh, location ID we could change if we had these uh, multiple locations. I hope this uh, provide a good introduction to what, uh, what you're actually about and what you can see there. So uh, thanks for watching.